Anemia is a reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. So if the blood can't carry the oxygen around because the oxygen is not absorbing into the red cells, that will cause an anemic hypo hypoxia. Blood loss is an obvious cause of this. In acute hemorrhage, red blood cells are going to be lost and there can be an acute reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Chronic hemorrhage can also lead to anemia because in chronic hemorrhage, it's easier to replace the fluid component of the blood than it is to produce the red cells. It takes time to produce the red cells. So in chronic hemorrhage, your blood is being regularly lost, for example, caused by tumours of the gastrointestinal tract or fibroids where a lot of blood is lost in menstruation. Then that can lead to an anemia. And anemia, of course, can have many causes. Iron deficiency is the most common global cause of anemia. A large proportion of the world's population are actually iron deficient. And it's relatively easy to treat this by giving them additional iron and by treating things like gastrointestinal worms, which can contribute towards the anemia. Megaloblastic anemia is anemia where there are large red blood cells. And the large red blood cells are immature red blood cells that don't carry the oxygen properly. For example, this can occur in pernicious anemia, where there's a lack of vitamin B12. In pernicious anemia, it's actually an autoimmune disease. The cells which normally produce the intrinsic factor, which is essential for the absorption of vitamin B12, are progressively destroyed by the body's own immune system. So pernicious anemia, lack of vitamin B12 in the diet, lack of folic acid in the diet, chronic hemorrhage, all of these things can lead to anemia. There's another group of anemias called hemolytic anemias. Hemo, blood, lytic to break up. Um, the, this is where there's abnormalities of the hemoglobin or of the red cells themselves that mean the body's own reticuloendothelial system, the body's own macrophage system, monocyte macrophage system, will break down the red cells excessively. Thalassemia causes abnormal haemoglobin. Um, sickle cell disease, spherocytosis, will lead to abnormal shaped red blood cells. And you might have come across G6PD deficiency, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme deficiency. That can lead to hemolytic anemias. Aplastic anemia is where the bone marrow stops producing all sorts of cells, all the blood cells. In fact, the patients with aplastic anemia tend to die of <coughs> immunodeficiency as a result of the white cells before they become very anemic, actually. And carbon monoxide is also a cause of reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Because when carbon monoxide is absorbed into the haemoglobin, it forms a stable compound called carboxyhemoglobin, and that means that the oxygen can't fit onto the haemoglobin because the haemoglobin is already occupied with the carbon monoxide. So let's look at these notes briefly, and then I'm going to illustrate what I've just talked about with a little truck. Now the red cells carry the haemoglobin, and haemoglobin is a carrier molecule. It carries things around just the same as a truck carries things around. And of course what the red cells and the haemoglobin carry around is oxygen. Now this red card represents the lungs, and this blue card represents the tissues of the body. So in the lungs, oxygen goes from the alveoli into the red cells, to be transported. This red cell will then drain via the pulmonary veins to the left side of the heart, which will pump the blood to the body and onto the body tissues. And once in the body tissues, the oxygen will be given up 
to the body tissues. At the same time, because the body tissues have been producing waste carbon dioxide, some of this waste carbon dioxide at least will be carried also by the red cells back via the inferior and superior vena cava back to the right side of the heart to be pumped to the lungs again and once it gets to the lungs the carbon dioxide will be given up and breathed out and more oxygen will absorb into the red cell to be carried via the heart to the body tissues again delivering more oxygen taking back more carbon dioxide. So this circulation of the red cell will carry on for the entire life of the red cell. And that works very well. Unless the person inhales carbon monoxide, which is represented by the green bricks. This is carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide will be absorbed by the haemoglobin in the red cells in the same way that oxygen is. And again, it will go via the circulatory system to the tissues of the body. And when the carbon monoxide gets to the tissues of the body, it actually forms a stable compound with the haemoglobin, so it's not given up, it sticks. So the red blood cell has no choice, it carries on around in the circulation. Back to the lungs. And again, the carbon monoxide, because it forms a stable compound with the haemoglobin, is not given up and not breathed out again. This combination of haemoglobin and carbon monoxide is called carboxyhemoglobin. And carboxyhemoglobin is a stable molecule. It will keep circulating round, but because the carbon monoxide is adherent to the haemoglobin, it's not given up. And when this red cell is in the lungs, more oxygen will try to get in, but because the oxygen-carrying sites in the haemoglobin are taken up by the carbon monoxide, the, car the oxygen can't get in because of the presence of the carbon monoxide. So the red cell, or at least the haemoglobin molecules in the red cell occupied by carbon monoxide, cannot carry any oxygen. This red, this red cell is now useless, at least for, for a period of time. It can't carry the oxygen. And because it's carrying carbon monoxide and not oxygen, because it can't carry the oxygen, the oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood is reduced. Now, this can happen in...